Business owners have over the years expressed uh, frustration around the liquor license renewal process with many finding it to be time consuming and tedious. Now in response to this, the Hunting Liquor Board recently launched digital liquor license renewals through a platform titled Thrive. Hi, so good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we discuss the process of digital renewals of liquor licenses. Now to kick off the conversation, joining us in studio, we're having a conversation that uh, uh, advocate Fatima Namela, who is the director of the Houting Liquor Board, as well as the CEO of Thrive Keta Masiboko. They are both joining us in studio this evening. Gentlemen, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Advocate, I want to start the conversation with you, you know, uh, especially, um, you know, looking at the process, you know, of first acquiring a license and secondly, just renewing it. Um, maybe just to give us a context on what it entails, especially when you go out there and you say that you want to apply for a license and also the process of renewing it. Yeah. No, thanks very much. I think the process you know, starts off with the applicant who is an aspirant liquor trader approaching the municipality uh, asking for permission to get approval from the municipality to, you know, get a space where they would actually trade as, you know, a liquor trader. Uh, that's the first step. So you all knock at the door of the municipality because they are in control of the space mm -hmm. uh, where we live and the space where we actually do trade, be it, you know, um, liquor trade or, or other, you know, kinds of, you know, businesses. And then thereafter, you'll follow certain other requirements, including your tax clearance certificates, your SAPS clearance, you know, lease agreements, and all the other requirements that are actually listed in the Act. Assuming your application succeeds and the board grants it, um, the license is valid for a period of a year. So you are required as a liquor trader or as a licensee to renew a license um, at the date, at the anniversary date uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the period within which you actually got your, your license. So a license is valid for a, for a year and then it's renewable at uh, the anniversary date upon which it was actually granted. Mm. Um, you know, I'm also interested in finding out what are the common and uh, uh, frequently reported challenges with the process now. Um, uh, have you started experiencing uh, certain challenges, I mean, especially from the applicants themselves, yeah. or have they raised concerns about it? Well, we, we often get complaints from applicants uh, that the process is arduous, it's, it's quite challenging, it's long, it's frustrating. And that is why they resort to employing consultants who do the, all the runarounds, you know, to launch the application, to publish in the newspaper, you know, to seek clearances from, you know, other authorities, mm -hmm. and ultimately presenting their boards with a motivation that would actually, you know, sort of uh, convince the board that the application is in order and the debt license should actually be granted. So we, 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 we take it that it's not as, as difficult as it may seem, mm -hmm. uh, but you would know that, you know, it shouldn't be just but, you know, an easy uh, thing, you know, to, to do to just get a license. As we know, the, you know, negative uh, effects of alcohol and the extent to which it has, you know, created, you know, some social ills in the, in the society. But the legislature in, in designing the Liquor Act made it um, in such a way as you have to knock at you know, other doors you know, who happen to be competent authorities yep. because liquor licensing is not only the domain of the Houghton Department of Economic Development of the GLB. You have got other role players like your municipalities. There are bylaws. You have seen people actually parking you know, at the... Uh, you know, at the, at the premises of, you know, um, you know, other residents within townships causing nuisance. Um, you have seen people parking at spaces which were not actually being designated mm. for, 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 for parking and creating a whole lot of, you know, complaints from members of the public. So the, the bylaws actually kick in and the municipality should actually police that to say you cannot, op you cannot operate before, I mean, in front of, you know, a 
a facility that actually provides transport. Um, Advocate, I'm going to come back to you. Keta, let me bring you to this conversation. I want to understand uh, about the newly launched uh, digital uh, renewal platform, how it came about. I mean, uh, when you started uh, coming up with such an initiative, what was on your mind? Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, first of all, what Thrive is, is really we are a, a digital solution for licensed outlets to run their business. So we operate as a software business and we build um, tools that um, especially liquor outlets um, can use to run their store. That's everything from your point of sale machine. Um, so we very much focus on how do we decash um, the environments, specifically when it comes to um, the township traders. Um, by allowing them to trade, we're using cards and other payment um, uh, tenders. Um, so the first thing we offer is we have a Thrive uh, card machine that you're able to use to run your store. The second is that we've got stock tracking so that you can understand as a business what stock do you have and how that stock is selling um, that we also have integrated into um, our card machine and point of sale. And then the third and probably most powerful then is the Thrive app which allows the owner to be able to buy directly from the suppliers and pay the suppliers using the app. So instead of having to run around taking cash to bank branches or mm. taking cash to depots or to suppliers, um, you can now, in the comfort of your home or your business, um, get on the app, you select a supplier um, and pay for, select the invoice and pay for the stock that you need. Mm -hmm. um, so our role is really to empower um, the business owner and make sure that they can run their business digitally. Um, How has it been received? I mean, uh, now absolutely. it's out so, there. How are the people yeah, receiving so, it? So uh, we, we went live, interestingly enough, uh, 2020 through, during lockdown processes. But uh, I think there's, there really has been a huge demand and need for digital services that are relevant for the township economy and built for the township economy. Things that are, that are there to simplify how things work, that take away admin. So, you know, things, you know, for us, it's been purported that we don't, present a banking solution, but we present a business solution. Um, and so that's been our focus, to make sure that we are there to decash, enable, and digitize how um, a business runs um, locally. Um, and for us, this milestone, launching license renewal, is an additional feature of the app. So we have all these other features, but this feature is a critical one because we're allowing um, outlets to be able to uh, now not only buy stock, but also to renew their licenses on the Thrive app. Let's punk it there. Uh, we're in conversation with Advocate Fatima Namela, who is the Houghton Lick Board Director, as well as Ketha Maziboko, who is the CEO of Thrive. We're gonna take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue the conversation on uh, the renewal of liquor licenses digitally. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwan. And now before the ad break, we started the conversation on the digital renewal of liquor licenses and what is this, uh, what's involved in the whole process there. Uh, the advocate uh, Fatih Manamela is still joining us, uh, who is the Chief Director of the Hunting Liquor Board, as well as Keta Maziboko, uh, who is the Chief Executive uh, for Thrive. Uh, they're, they're still joining us in studio. Gentlemen, thanks for staying on. I mean, Keta, um, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm still on the issue of the digital platform, yes. actually. I mean, obviously people, uh, you know, are afraid to use uh, the online platforms and stuff. Uh, let's talk about uh, safety measures of yes. how, uh, you know, as Thrive, you are able to safeguard the information that people punched in on the system. For those that are skeptical saying that, look, my information is going to be leaked somewhere else and stuff, um, how do you make sure that uh, there's no fraud, uh, there's no imp impersonation of, uh, of certain people, particularly using the app? Yeah, I think the first thing is that the way that we built the app is, um, you know, we started this um, inside Standard Bank. You know, I was an employee of Standard Bank for a number of years. And this was something we absorbed, uh, we saw and absorbed in, in our branches in terms of the number of um, outlet owners that come into branches with physical cash in order to pay suppliers. And then over the years, um, you know, we're talking billions of physical cash that mm -hmm. is carried, you know, every weekend when someone has run their business Monday morning, in order to get more stock, they have to go to the branch, make payments, and then stock gets delivered. And I think when we took a step back, we said there has to be a solution here. There has to be a way that we can empower our local businesses 
to operate online and to do things in the way that the rest of the world is doing and not and not continue to have this this part of the economy and this is it's a main part of the economy it's a, you know this is we're talking billions in trade that happens um, in our townships through taverns counter serves distributors um, and all of it's cash based so the way that we built the app um, working with the insights that we have with our branch tailors with the branch staff security has always been at the heart of it we want to make sure that people trust the service um, and that people understand that when I tap my card in the machine, that money is going to be available on the app to the owner. And when the owner says, I now want to pay um, the local supplier, the, the supplier is going to receive the money and deliver the goods the mm -hmm. next day. Um, so we've worked with our suppliers as well. We've had you know, strong partnerships with the, with the, the, the leading beverages um, and the beverage brands have been key partners in making sure that the platform um, continues to grow. Um, and so I think the way that I can answer the question is that ultimately when you build something working with um, the, everyone that's impacted, so working with the business owners, working with the, the cashier in the store, working with the brands, you, you build in the right security and you build things properly. And so um, our design has been user-centric from the beginning and we just continue to evolve and adding new features as we have done now with license renewals. Advocate, um, you know, as the Houting Liquor Board, how do you deal with people who are presenting fake, um, you know, or fake liquor licenses? Because, I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, places being pounced by law enforcement and you would see that a person actually has some documents, for instance, uh, that look legit, mm. if I put it that way. Have you ever had challenges such as those whereby people just, you know, just decide that, look, I've got a document and it's from the Houting Liquor Board, but even though the document is fake? True. I think that's a huge challenge. Um, it would appear in South Africa, there's always, you know, mm. a, you know, a counterfeit of something. Yeah. And we, we do come across quite a number of those kind of incidents. Um, they get arrested. We work with the police, um, we file cases with the SAPS and I think a few have actually been arrested after they had presented, you know, counterfeit uh, licenses. Uh, we had an incident, you know, some time back where we lost, you know, uh, license certificates. Uh, but each time when they are presented to the office for renewals, we catch them. So it's a huge challenge and, and that's one big, you know, fight that we're trying to, to overcome. Thrive actually came in very handy to actually mm. also assist with that in terms of it ensures compliance, you know, with your conditions of license, you know, the regulations and the prescripts of the Hotel Liquor Act. It also assists us with the whole lot of, you know, licenses that may actually lapse uh, where, you know, uh, traders may be unaware that, you know, the anniversary date has actually uh, come up and then they have to you know, do their renewals. So Thrive in, in, in one way or the other actually also assists in, in that regard yeah. uh, in, you know, detecting, you know, fraudulent and, uh, you know, counterfeit licenses that we would normally get you know, mm. at the office. How, how do you deal with, uh, I mean, uh, we've been through other places. I mean, <laughs> I'm not putting you in the spot here, but uh, there's certain areas that you would see that there's a club and then uh, the, the school is not far from that, certain facilities. Some, somehow, when you give out licenses, do you consider those even churches that are near the establishments? I mean, for instance, I would make an example in another province mm. uh, whereby the club is here and then the parking, they're using the parking for the church. I don't know how does it work in situations such as that. In Gauteng province, do you come up with, do you come, uh, come across such situations whereby you've got a school there and then the club is here? We have. Um, when, when the board receives applications mm. and, exactly. and you know, adjudicates on them, they consider all those things. Mm. Um, and the act specifically states that you may not grant a license uh, where you know, the outlet is within 500 square meter radius. Uh, of the proximity of a church, you know, synagogue, you know, um, yeah. a school, you know, a kindergarten, you know, facility, or maybe a transport facility. So, other, you know, circumstances um, would compel or, or convince or persuade the board to actually grant. One, probably the motivation would be strong enough 
to the uh, applicant would have actually gathered some signatures around you know those areas that yeah. are actually you know designated areas where you cannot actually uh, conduct that trade uh, three the 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 board in all material um, 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 attempts when it actually you know deals with you know applications try to you know uh, look into the whole issue of is it in the interest of the public to grant or not to grant? So it is not, it is not uncommon to actually find a tavern or a bottle store next to you know, a, a, a church. It only depends on the merits that the board would have actually dealt with in granting you know, that license. Elsewhere, you would find that the, the, the outlet you know, was there before and the church actually came there after. We, we, we have, you know, had those kind of scams where, you know, the, you know, tent churches that you would erupt, you know, everywhere. But it is the board's call to actually look into the merits, how the motivation has actually been crafted, and whether or not it is in the public interest to actually grant or refuse that license. Mm. But the act specifically states that even though they have that kind of a discretion, they are being, you know, um, you know, uh, um, you know, they are being given the powers in respect of that particular, you know, prescript mm -hmm. in the act to say, thou shalt not license when it's actually within 500 meter of, you know, a church, you know, a similar operation, a school and, and other facilities that have been designed. Advocate, I'm going to pocket there. Uh, uh, Kath, I'm going to come to you after the ad break. I want us to just talk about, uh, is this an idea whereby uh, you want, uh, you know, I mean, this whole process will completely be 100% digital. Uh, if it's going there or if it's not, I want to get your thoughts on that. Let's take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are getting closer to the end of the show. And as we continue the conversation with the Chief Director for the Heart and Liquor Board, Advocate Fatima Manamela, as well as Keta Maziboko, who is the CEO of Thrive, they're still here joining us uh, this evening. Um, Keta, I want to, you know, just uh, close this conversation by just looking at uh, what happens now? Mm. Uh, I mean, this is a great idea that you guys came up with. It's a great partnership. Uh, but is there some sort of future plans that we are going 100% digitally when we do renewals and also applications? Absolutely. So I think from, from a Thrive perspective, our business, our core business, is to enable um, our traders to run their business digitally 24-7 wherever, wherever they are. Yeah. Um, so that's our core. We want to be a business partner to anyone who's operating a liquor outlet in South Africa, and we want to make their ability to run their business simple. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes everything from, as I said, front office, being able to have the right card machines, back office, being able to place orders, and even how to promote your business, um, you know, to, uh, to tell your customers that you are, you know, you're showing a soccer game, let them come watch in your, um, in your tavern. Those are all the services that we provide solutions for as Thrive. Um, so our role as Thrive is to make sure that you can run your business digitally. Um, it's, it's important that we, so we offer a lot of um, financial services, even the ability to even get stock advance. So if you're going into business, uh, a, a busy period, um, yeah. you know, it's December, hit busy trade, you need the ability to um, get additional stock advance, we can process those alone so that you can buy more stock. So there's a variety of services that we offer on the platform. Um, but I think one of the most critical that we offer is the ability to now renew your license. Um, it is important that we don't want a business to run digitally if it doesn't actually run compliantly. And that's yeah. what the, the first step is. Get on the platform, um, register your business properly on the app, and then renew your license and then operate your business. And so we will in time um, launch all the, the services required yeah. that you can from lodgement all the way through to renewal be able to do that in the app. Right now for, for where we are now at the end of 2023, you can renew your license on the Thrive app. Advocate, I mean, the Houting Liquor Board has, you know, always has their hands full during this, the festive <laughs> season. Yeah. How do we make sure that uh, uh, you know, alcohol is not easily accessible to kids, uh, responsible uh, drinking, because we know people will be drinking and getting on the roads uh, also. And then, I mean, we, 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 you guys have been advocating for no pants down parties uh, throughout. 
um, uh, what would be your role and also the message that you want to give out there as we are heading to Christmas and also uh, the, the New Year celebrations? Thanks. Just to piggyback on what Katha has just said before I get into that question, uh, Premier has launched what we call a cashless holding. Mm -hmm. And Thrive is just but you know one program that plugs into the broader yeah. you know framework of, of that cashless you know um, trade in in in, in Gauteng. Coming back to the question of yeah festive yeah there's just a lot of alcohol um, you know um, being sold being you know uh, consumed and we we have a message to you know everyone out there be it a pedestrian be it a driver that drink responsibly don't drink and drive don't walk and drive. I mean, don't drink and walk, I'm sorry. Um, I just came back from a mm. function, I think at the um, park station, yeah. um, uh, launched by the Department of Transport, it's called Fatela. They are trying to promote um, uh, safety on the roads. And we also play a key role as the Hotel de Copcourt to you know, uh, urge you know, all the consumers and traders of alcohol to be responsible when they you know, use you know, this substance and also to you know care for you know people that are closer to themselves and uh, to also take care of themselves also and be responsible and do do the right thing we have issued out a press statement um, um, asking you know um, traders not to actually support this pens down campaign that we see every yeah. year after matrix have actually written their exams and I think the message has gone down very well. Uh, we have seen very few incidents of that. We have put police on, on alert to actually also assist. And we have also, you know, uh, spoken to our local committees to desist uh, from actually issuing occasional permits yeah. where those kind of parties are going to be held, where our kids, you know, underage persons are going to be exposed to alcohol. And I think the message has gone down very, very well. So, yeah. You can continue. Yeah. So yeah. our message basically is um, be responsible, be responsible. Uh, drink responsibly, don't drink and drive, don't walk and drive, I mean, don't, don't drink and walk. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, and observe all the rules pertaining to, you know, the roads and alcohol use. Thanks. And renew your license. And renew your, and renew license. your license. Please come on board. Thrive is there. Uh, it's baby steps, but we are going to get everybody on board and we are digitizing and it is the now, it is the future. Mm. Just before I let you guys go, uh, can you just give us where people can find you, just both of you? you know? Absolutely. Um, Thrive, we are available online, so thrive.trade, that's our website. Um, you can get a hold of us as well on Instagram and Facebook at thrive.trade. Um, and you can also WhatsApp us, we have a WhatsApp line and the number is available. Um, and, uh, but otherwise, get a hold of us on our website, all our information, how to get the app, we can install our card machine in your store, it allow you to do all the ordering, thrive.trade. Mm. How do you make a board? Yeah, uh, we are at 124 Main Street in Jobeck. We have got other regional offices spread across the entire province. Um, our contact line would be liqua.queries at houting.gov.za. Gentlemen, thanks very much. I wish we had more time, but unfortunately we've ran out of it. Yeah. Much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you. Thanks so much. That was Advocate uh, Fatima Namela, who is the Chief Director for the Houting Liquor Board, as well as Ketama Ziboko, who is the CEO of Thrive, joining us to let us know more about the relaunch of the digital renewals of liquor licenses, and also touching how you know best to get through the festive season responsibly. I hope that they will be able to pounce on those areas that are selling fake liquor out there. That's how we wrap it up uh, for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV today. Alternatively, you can send us a WhatsApp message or you can call us at 81 531-8857. From myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. Just stay with us for your latest news update with Maschaba Kobola coming up next.